Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. I believe this is from the winner's match of Group A. By the way, as I, I'm going to cover as much of the round of 32 of Hatsu League as I am able to. However, I don't get the full spectrum of replays because the replays are optional in the round of 32. And I know that there's some players who explicitly did not upload replays uh, because they did not want to give their opponent a potential advantage. I did, however get some and actually i feel like in the casting space that right i can understand actually i'll give this option to the players at large for a future round of 32s i should make this explicit you can send me the replay direct you'll end up with the cast the cast does happen live on twitch but then uh obviously the actual gameplay won't happen later and then maybe there's less of a an issue with that because i'd like to cover as much as possible i like highlighting the hard work i guess i was actually discussing this with esky yesterday it's like in starcraft like part of the enjoyment of it is like highlighting the amount of, of uh, I don't know, hard work that people put into this game. Anyway, bottom right hand corner, we have Phoebus starting as the Peach Terran. Upper right hand corner, we have Bayagster, or Bayagster. I'm not sure if that Bay Area Axter. No, just uh, as the pink Protoss. I was thinking about doing a color swap, but I kind of like these colors. This is going to be on Good Night. Should be a fun matchup. This is the winner's match from Group A. So whoever wins this advances. I think this is going to be all I have from Group A otherwise. So uh, hope I'll, uh, I guess you'll see in the round of 16 what the brackets are. I believe those have been posted around. And if they haven't been posted, I'll try to figure out a location to post that. That will be open and available. It's like we're seeing a gateway and a simulator. So a simulator before uh, Zealot there to the north and no double gateway. Barracks, kind of, kind of interesting location going to the south. We do see a refinery behind this. Kind of typical play in that regard, but it's interesting that this, yeah, going for the barracks more towards that bottom corner rather than going towards like an upper area, or sometimes you'll even see it hugging the command center there, or not even going for front door seal. It looks like Phoebus is going to get first scout off. He's heading to the upper right hand corner first, is producing a zealot before cybernetic score. And I kind of like that on four player maps to kind of get the double scout out potentially. And now we have the probe making its way. Is it going to go south? It looks like it is going to get first scout as well. That might have been a reaction from Baya, just seeing that SCV coming from the south. SCV in the main. Now the question is, is does this cell bother with the SCV? Does it just wait for the Dragoon? Or does it just proceed? It looks like it is going to proceed to the main. Now keep in mind this front door is open. If this probe cycles, let's see if the probe actually goes for it. The probe does manage to sneak into the main. It's going to eat a bit of damage. Now does it get taken out? Escapes with one health! One last hit, factory being built, a lot of information was scouted, but the Zealot actually pressing forward, and I, I think a Marine was skipped in between there to get that factory down a little bit earlier. Phoebus backing up towards the Supply Depot Enclave with these two Marines, but that does open up an opportunity for the Zealot to maybe harass that SCV. This SCV got the scouting information it was looking for in the main scene. Range being upgraded to Dragoon, about halfway finished. And there is the uh, standard third pylon in the base, so nothing too cheesy. So here's that Zealot, the SCV trying to blockade. There's three Marines and a fourth Marine on the way to deal with this. But the Zealot provides scouting information, forces a bit of micro on Thebes' part. But this is my concern, is, is this, yeah, this area doesn't necessarily protect a lot of the rest of this base. This first Vulture being produced should be able to take this Zealot out no problem, but I believe that Bio is just happy to expend this Zealot to get scouting information. And it looks like he is, in fact, just going to walk out with it now. The Marines kind of... This almost feels like something out of a... Uh, it, I feel like Yakety Sack should have been played in the background. It's almost like that Zealot did not... Did not give a fuck. Curse commentary. Did not care. Just walk through. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to get hit in the face with these bullets. Get the scouting information I'm looking for and just walk right out. Did not care. Marines pushing out to the natural expansion. A command center just being plopped. Did not give a frick. That's what I should have said instead. I, I, was, I was more into the PG-13 in the past. These days, I don't know. Everybody's an adult or... I don't know. Cares less. SCV trying to scoop back through to get a scout at the natural expansion. That Zealot. Oh, is he going to die? The Dragoon doesn't want to press out. Looks like that Vulture going to take a bit of damage. Did manage to peek up and see that there's no natural expansion yet. Two, uh, which suggests that that is, in fact, a two-gateway build, and there are two gateways behind this. I th is Baya just going to continue? So do we, we do have a pile on that corner. It looks like he's continuing to build Dragoons. He is going to start pressing that front door. There's no bunker as of yet, and I don't see a... Okay, so Siege Tank's been produced. Mines have been produced. There's that bunker, but with a decent amount of micro, if this army can get cohesive, it might be able to do a decent amount of 
damage to this front door with those marines exposed with just a vulture and a siege tank defending. The siege tank might be protected. It looks like that bunker is going to finish, but the marines not quite in position to get there. So one marine takes a bit of damage. That finishes just in the nick of time. And that was, I feel like, just a little bit of delay from Baya opening that up. Two dragoons moving out, and this is interesting. He's got that probe. I think that was just a bit of Miss Micro. Bring that probe to go ahead and grab that natural expansion. Got caught up in things. He's actually building some additional zealots on top of this. So I'm almost wondering if he's going to go for a two base. If he, he's going to plop down some additional gateways and go for more of a, ba uh, a bust to follow this up. Or if he's going to go for a robotics facility and zealot drop. Vulture is peeking out. Able to take out that zealot rapidly. Turret on the front to respect that DT potential potentiality. But in the meantime, Thebus playing it a little bit light. I like that he's got the... Is there a turret? I think there might be a turret hidden under... I think you can see it. You can just see a little bit of spinny. I can't select it. But there is a turret hidden underneath there. Second tank being produced. So Thebus is going to stay on one factory and play it a little bit more economically safe. Which, unfortunately, might end up working against him if Baya, in fact, does go for a bust here. Although it looks like it's going to be off... If he's going to try this, he's going to try to do it off just two gates. The Vulture trying to sneak forward, get some additional mines, sees the Zealots, and that has to be an indicator. The Zealots running through, doing the mine drag. That's allowing the Dragoons. SCVs are not there. Does the bunker go down? The bunker does not go down, however. And Baya expending a lot of resources in Dragoon health, flat-out Dragoons, and Zealots pressing into that front door. And three siege tanks pushing that back. I'm, that was kind of a... Odd play, I'm going to have to say. And he's immediately going to Stargate. So this is interesting. I'm wondering if this is going to be the two-base Stargate-ish build. We'll have to see. First, star uh, first Stargate down. Usually you're going to see two Stargates uh, and then and kind of a pause in production from there. SCV Scout moving out. I think it wants to go check and see whether there's a third. Baya playing a little bit light at this stage. And honestly... Yeah, he's produced troops out of this. He hasn't plopped down a third gateway. He's getting that observatory up. Two additional gateways. This is kind of... I'm curious what the Stargate's going to produce out of this. So we got four gateways down here off the two bases. Pretty well saturated. He does have that second assimilator up. He's got observer, observers coming out. A Stargate waiting in the wings. And that's a very early Stargate to grab before grabbing your gateway. So expect some tech out of this. And we'll have to see how the build goes from here. In the meantime, just... A third factory being plopped down, but pretty macro-oriented play from Thebus thus far. He has not yet put down an armory, critically, so it doesn't look like... I think he might just be trying to play the steady, get-to-three base uh, sort of play, but he does have a lot of siege tanks, and he's starting to filter out, it looks like, with some vultures here and there, at least wandering out. I like that he's scouting with these SCVs to try to get an eye on what his opponent's up to, and after scouting everything out, he's going to realize, okay, there's no third base. There's something coming at me, and it looks like it is going to be a Stargate and a Fleet Beacon. I'm not sure if this is... This is a very... So this is the ASL cutting edge style of build. I don't know if this the timing of it is correct comparatively. I haven't seen a replay of it to know what the precise timings are overall. But effectively, it's two base carrier to try to press... And what this can do is, is this can really mitigate and harm the uh, various pushes that Terran attempts to execute. And if you can just hold on, oftentimes what you can do is, is just get a big air fleet and map control uh, and play the match from there. Vulture dropping a mine. And basically punish Terran where they have to make decisions around what sort of mech they're fielding. And uh, basically force them into kind of more Goliath play and, and just build what they don't have, more or less. Make them guess. Either they don't have enough vultures or they don't have enough tanks or they don't have enough Goliaths uh, to build everything that's going overhead. First two carriers are being produced. Some vultures starting to sneak out, that observer catching the edge of it. But I like what Phoebus has done in the meantime. He's basically got a lot of other expansions camped out and kind of eyes covered there uh, while this is happening. I think he might have... I'm not sure if he has I, uh, has an idea of what his opponent's up to yet or not. I haven't seen any commsat... or I haven't heard any commsats dropped in that corner. In the meantime, he is going up. There's the first commsat. Let's see if I can go ahead and... So he, he commsatted the main. He missed... The Stargate's here in the upper left-hand corner. This tech switch does take a bit of time. In the interim, five gateways down. So it looks like it and a six gateway on the... Or, sorry, gateway factory on the way. So, and we do have an armory working towards weapons one. But with the six gateway 
being placed, I believe Thebus is looking to get aggressive sooner rather than later. Siege tanks and vultures are now making their way out. This is kind of the decision tree in the Terran field. He does have an SCV with him. Is Does he want to just get aggressive and try to press against this? And this can be, as far as this build goes, one of the harder to deal with windows because you have some carriers, but you don't have like a critical mass of carriers to really fight back the massive amount that's underneath here, but Baya has built a lot of ground army in between this, a lot of Dragoons, delaying this a little bit, some turrets being planted. Now keep in mind those turrets can be ranged by the carriers, and I don't see any Goliaths yet on Thebus' side of the map. So we'll see, this is kind of my first time seeing this in uh, ASL action, we'll see if this cutting edge build from Baya is in fact going to pay off, or Thebus is just going to be able to run this over. Don't want to spoil the ASL Finals, but we saw something like this in the ASL Finals. No Goliaths grouping. It looks like a 6 o'clock base being grabbed by Phoebus behind this. Again, trying to play it a little bit more macro-oriented. If Baya... Here's the thing for Baya. If he doesn't really get something accomplished with these carriers as well, and this Dragoon Force on the ground, if he doesn't... Basically, he needs speed to be able to push through this. That first turret being... So the carriers have been revealed. That first turret down... Dragoon's pressing forward, but they're running into a huge minefield. Several of them getting taken out. Now the Zealot's leading. Keep in mind, they don't have speed. So they're backing out initially, but they're going to be able to get on top of the... And it looks like... Did those tanks already back out? Looks like the tanks are very much to the south. Going to work on this turret here, and the carries, yeah, just pressing forward. It looks like these vultures now in retreat. And the rest of this army from Baya... Clearing out, actually still taking a little bit of damage. Clearing out what's left. The Vulture's trying to re-engage. The tank's unseaged, re-sieging. Now that Dragoons are there. The Vulture's trying to create a blockade to keep those siege tanks alive. And the Carrier's just unabated, doing all sorts of damage underneath this. The Zealot's on a Zealot on top of the siege tanks. Let's see if reinforcements start peeling out from Baya. Baya still hasn't grabbed a third. So he's effectively sort of all in at this stage. He needs to basically do significant damage to Thebus in order to take this match. Pressing in, an observer now sees that six o'clock base. There's no, that looks like there's four Goliaths left. And that is it. And there's enough Dragoons and Carriers to punch through. Goliaths do pretty well one-on-one, -on -one, but they do not do well in these combination attack situations where they have to deal with uh, ground units. And this is where, what kind of that situation I was talking about earlier, where Thebus doesn't have the combination of troops to really repel this. He might want more siege... He wanted a siege tank Goliath combo. So he's going to end up losing the 6 o'clock base. That mineral only is currently blockaded. It looks like a... I like that barracks kind of floating around, checking for additional expansions that might be floating out. More Dragoons filtering in. Some more Goliaths out here. It looks like a handful of Vultures, a single siege tank. I still don't know that this is sufficient. The Dragoons pressing those Goliaths back. And with these mines blockading, it looks like finally that's been taken out. Finally, Phoebus... Ooh, going to lose a Dragoon, but he's going to pick up a Nexus. SCV is trying to group repair this command center to buy time, but more carriers are starting to be fielded. It looks like some more Goliaths are out, but at this situation, I worry about Phoebus' ability to deal with what is just on the ground right now. The Dragoon's trying to back out because it looks like some of them have snuck underneath. They might be able to get a counterattack in while those carriers are out of position, and this would be a great situation for Thebus if he can engage purely with those Goliaths to the carriers to the south. And deal with the rest of the units to the north, just in pure Dragoon, it looks like. The carriers... How many carriers are this? I think this is just the four still. Still four grouping up. Have managed to wipe out SCV. Starting to work on that command center as well. Phoebus trying to make the best of his situation. He does have a sizable ground force moving out underneath this. The Dragoons are piled up in the middle of the map, but they're not in a defensive position. <clears throat> and Phoebus trying to buy time by using this command center potentially as bait it looks like. I'm not sure this is going to work out overall, though. By a repositioning, it looks like this Nexus canceled to the north. Two carriers grouping up to take care of these siege tanks. So Phoebus making a game of it, trying to deny expansions while he gets things back together. That's actually putting Baya in the red overall. Some Zealots moving up, but keep in mind these are still slow Zealots running into that minefield to go ahead and clear that. That's also critically drawing the carrier fleet back outside of Thebus's base, so Thebus can continue, and he still has that command center, so he can still resaturate that potentially, get enough Goliaths on the ground to deal with what Thebus, or sorry, what Baia's fielding. 
So even though Baez is up in supply, he doesn't have a third base. I think Thebus might have bought himself some time to get a sufficient Goliath force out and enough support underneath it with kind of the shenanigans of doing that split force. And he's denied a third base to Baya through just kind of general unit movement, which I, I really like that play overall. His Goliath's getting a little too far forward here. Two of them getting picked off. Still making a match of it. Supply is now even. Baya regrouping that army to keep it cohesive. He does have six carriers in the air, keep in mind. So this is a, a pretty sizable attack force, but this is a lot of Goliaths to deal with it. Let's see if there's some more siege tanks that are going to regroup. And he's starting to resaturate the 6 o'clock base. Now this is starting to get Danger Town for Baya because his main's mining out. His natural expansion is still up. Looks like he's working on weapons 1, but he still hasn't grabbed his 3rd. Just now grabbing his 3rd. And just finally picking off the siege tank and whatnot to deal with this. And I gotta say, as far as the first fielding of this style of play at this level, it's interesting to watch. And I think Thebus... I like Thebus's response to this. Carrier's moving down, but it looks like some vultures once again sneaking through. Baya just having difficulty dealing with Thebus's multi-pronged multi attacks. Looks like another mine blocking that expansion to the north. These mines have been absolutely golden. The carrier fleet engaging these Goliaths getting caught in the middle of the map. Certainly a carrier going to eat a lot of damage there. They're trying to back off now. Level 1 weapons is there for the Goliaths as well to pick off those interceptors, and that's critical. No level 1 armor, and I, actually it's hard to tell. you got to wait for the interceptors to be out before I can tell whether there's level 1 air weapons out of the field. I should have been paying more attention to that. Looks like that's been cleared to maybe take that 12 o'clock base. But the 6 o'clock base has been grabbed by Thebus. He's staying pretty close in supply, exactly where he needs to be. Still got the six factories behind this. He's delayed. It looks like paused a little bit on upgrades. And as I say this, he's starting uh, level one armor. But I believe he has an overall advantage to Baya. Potentially. Only in the fact that he's denied these expansions for quite a bit. And I believe he's gotten himself the time he needed to fill in a lot of Goliaths and have a sufficient attack force underneath to really let them do their work. Now the question is, is engagement still? Engagement still. Will he be able to find the better engagements with where he can get on top of these carriers and really punish Baya for and it's kind of a, it's an interesting inversion almost of the gameplay where previously it's mech that tends to be the slower moving army that has trouble getting to locations. In this instance, it's the carriers and following the carriers around and they're the slow moving army that has trouble uh, getting to location. It looks like the 12 o'clock base at threat some vultures moving up engaging Dragoons, planting some mines defensively, the Goliaths there as well, and catching the probes in transfer, well-timed by Thebus, sieging up in the split area between, it looks like some vultures being picked off in between the carriers, trying to group up. So Thebus a bit on the clock here to, to do significant amounts of damage before there's a mounted counterattack. The carriers moving up. There are Goliaths there to engage. It's going to say one carrier down, but not quite yet. Having trouble target firing. The Dragoon's coming from the right. Nice engagement from Baya. One carrier down. But it looks like the rest of this attack force, between reinforcements coming from the north, Dragoon's coming from the right, and Zealots underneath, they are going to be able to clean this up. However, two carriers down. I think Baya's happy to exchange two carriers for two bases, but Vultures have snuck through and wiped out every probe, it looks like, in that transfer and that 3 o'clock. So the story of this engagement actually is, is yeah, yeah, Baya was able to fight Phoebus back, but he lost practically every probe via Baya sneaking, or via Phoebus sneaking in a vulture counterattack behind that. So he's down to 20 probes and is now in survival mode. Because yes, he has three carriers, but he's got to rely on his bank, the Dragoons he's got on the ground, and buy himself some time to resaturate. Granted, he's got four Nexus to do it. But he needs to, yeah, start building probes and in a hurry because his economy absolutely shattered. And this is not a cheap army to field. Some Arbiters all of a sudden. Here, as potentially the tech switch. And again, the probes getting annihilated. I don't know that Bai has been mining this entire time. So Phoebus really making a good match of it. <laughs> Interestingly enough, uh, getting cloak research behind. So he might actually be thinking about adding some Wraith. 
to attack as well. His natural expansion looking just about mined out. His main mined out. He's still got that six o'clock base mining. Bottom left is starting to mine for him as well. And I feel like he's got a decent amount of map control where he can work with this. So it's going to be two base Terran. I don't even want to call this three base Protoss because the pro count is so light. Not 12 o'clock base, not even mining. In theory, if Baya can get those probes resaturated before Thebus is able to mount another attack, he will be able to get a... He'll be in an economic edge situation unless Thebus decides to grab another base, which honestly he, he can at this stage, given his map control, given the amount of units he's got on the ground. I'm not sure if he realizes the situation he's in entirely, but he, he has to know that he's shattered by his economy. And he is okay. He's going to go ahead and move up. He's going to station at that 9 o'clock base to go ahead and grab that momentarily. And I kind of... It's fun because now Terran is kind of playing that guerrilla style comparatively. Critically, though, no science vessels out. And so now we have... Kind of the, this is almost like a cloaked nuke, equivalently, where the Arbiter is in position. It looks like one of them taking a lot of damage. They got to sit behind this attack force to be really effective in that engagement. Unfortunately, popping out the front, just getting annihilated. And there, Baya's going to call GG. He just doesn't have the economy to get it done. He's going to try to rely on cloaking to keep his units alive in between. And losing those two Arbiters, it was expensive and devastating. But I think he just realized that he just doesn't have the economy to, to keep up with this. So Baya actually executing, I feel like, that build fairly well. However, Phoebus, with some fantastic movement and management, able to kind of sneak things underneath, he's going to advance to the round of 16. I'm not sure what happened in the rest of this bracket. I'll try to get a round of 16 bracket up for you guys as soon as I am able. But a fun match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.